Are you afraid of death? I'm afraid of pain. I don't want to die in pain. I rather commit suicide. Gaspar Noé's thematic trajectory continues with his film Love, where much of the narrative revolves around the abortion argument. In efforts to actualize their ultimate sex fantasy, Murphy and Electra meet and seduce Omi, their teenage neighbor. Before sleeping together, Omi opens up about herself and reveals that she lives alone because her parents do not want her. Her very existence is an accident. Her mother wanted an abortion, and she never knew her father. So do you have a family here? No, I haven't. No. Where are your parents? Uh, I don't know. I was an accident, so. What, what do you mean? Well, life, they didn't want me, kind of. She want, your mother wanted to have an abortion? And yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, she has acted like that all her life, so, and I never knew my dad, so yeah. Omi asked Electra if she had ever aborted. Did you ever have an abortion? No. Okay. Me neither. Okay. Murphy jokes about it before stating that he is pro-choice. Although, I would have to say I am pro-choice. Really? Yeah. You're not? The fact that Omi was spared from abortion affirms her pro-life stance. I'm pro-life. You're pro-life? Yeah. Really? Well, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Murphy argues that it is hypocritical to value the life of a fetus if one does not value the lives of animals. Okay, so you're against abortion, but you're cool with people killing animals and then you're eating, eating them? Yeah, but that's, that's two different things. Omi's argument in response is that abortion is not natural, but carnivorism, like reproduction, is. You know, like, it's the part of the nature to eat meat. Huh? You come here, eat meat, make babies. <laughs> yeah, I know, I agree. I guess so. At this point, the light argument settles, but these contrasting political views become important as the narrative unfolds. When Electra is away, Murphy sleeps with Omi alone. Despite wearing protection, Murphy faces the consequences of his infidelity. What happened? It broke. When did you come? Murphy accidentally impregnates Omi. I think I'm pregnant. But it is clear that he does not want a child with her. Two stripes means positive. Can we do another one? Omi refuses to abort due to her pro-life stance. Murphy's mistake causes Electra to leave him. Omi's pregnant. What? Omi's pregnant? Whoa! Awful. Of who? Electra spirals downward into a state of depression. While the two have a history of infidelity, it is the unforgivable idea that Murphy will have a child with another woman that hurts her the most. I need to talk to you. Hey, this doesn't concern you. Don't touch him. 
Don't touch it. Who the fuck is that? What do you want from me? You are fucking having a baby with a slut. Murphy does want a child, but not with Omi, but instead with Electra. You think I want this to happen? I didn't want this I to happen. I have to have an abortion. We made a promise together. Yeah, you failed on that. I belong to you. You're a loser. You belong to me. You're a loser. I want to have a baby you with you. You're a loser. I'm done with you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You hey. don't know I love you. As Murphy attempts to get Electra back, there are many visual suggestions that abortion consumes his thoughts. Without seeing Electra, we witness Murphy yelling at her through the door, just as he would like to yell at the child in Omi's womb. Oh, open the door, baby! Please open the door, you fucking bitch! He may be saying this to Electra in the heat of the intense moment, or he may be expressing his thoughts about abortion as a mean to escape this pain. I'm gonna fucking kill you! As soon as you come out of this fucking place, I'm gonna fucking kill you! Aborting would make things so much easier for him after all, and it is ultimately a choice between the life of Electra and the life of the child. As Murphy comes to accept the situation at hand, Julio states that it was Murphy that put her there. Well, he was speaking about Murphy putting Electra into this emotional state, he could also be referring to Murphy putting the baby in Omi's womb. You fucking put her there. I put her there. Yeah, you put her there. Really, how does that work? Explain that to me. Explain to me, you sick little fuck. Murphy is faced with the consequences of his actions, and Omi's lack thereof. He is forced to live an unhappy life, raising a child he did not ask for, with a woman whom he does not love. Towards the beginning of the film, Murphy's child cries out to him. Why is he moaning? Today is shit. This is the life he lives now. Is the whole year gonna be like this? In contrast, being with Electra was like another lifetime. It seems so long ago. It seems like another lifetime. Murphy learns that Electra is missing and possibly committed suicide as a result of his actions. If this is the case, creating a new life can destroy another. Murphy is constantly reminded of the past. I think that is pregnant. The only thing keeping him going is his son. There's nothing for me here, except for this little guy. Even the lust he once had for Omi is no longer intact. The only use she has to him now is taking care of the child she insisted on having with him. I'm sick of this bitch. Go take care of the baby and leave me alone, please. Now he only feels trapped and manipulated. She tricked me. I know she did. Can you show me? There you can be. Murphy's past relationship with Electra was sexually charged and emotionally intense. Together, they made their deepest fantasies become reality. However, there is one thing they never did together. She said we could do anything together. But there's one thing we never did. This, of course, is Murphy's deepest desire his true ultimate fantasy, creating life. We never made a baby. In moments of intimacy, Murphy and Electra look towards their future, expressing their mutual desire to bring life into the world. What if I got you pregnant? I think I would be happy. think? 
if we can make more than one. Electra wants to be a mother, but not just to one kid, but instead several. You want more? Seven. Seven? <sighs> this is a reasonable number. Lucky number. Murphy states that this would please her mother, but Electra does not want to talk about her, as it's not about her mother's happiness, it's about theirs. What are we gonna do with all these kids? Start a farm. Big happy family that make your mom happy, I think. I don't really talk with her. This idealized feature of creating a family pervades their most intimate of moments. At one point, they visit an adult video store. One particular title that sticks out to them is about eight months of pregnant love. Maybe one day we can try. Love at eight months. A pregnant love story. During the heat of an intense argument, Murphy does his best to offend her, with the ultimate insult being directed at her maternal abilities. And you know what? You will me. never, ever you be want a good mother. Ever. Fucking... You will never be yeah, able to mother a child because you are a venomous cunt. After sleeping together, the two discuss baby names. If we had a baby, what would you name it? Murphy states that he wants to name his child Gaspar. Maybe Gaspar. Gaspar. Yeah. His son is named Gaspar, and he does seem to love him. But seeing that Omi is the mother rather than Electra, it's not the way he wanted things to be. Having a child may be wonderful, but it also brings his life great pain. How can something so wonderful bring such great pain? Murphy states that life is what you make of it. Life is what you make of it. I'll be good. He reflects on his past and imagines how life could have been better. He even asks God to bring him back. And in return, he swears to live a good life. Please, God, tell me this isn't true. No, no, no. I want to go back. I want to go back to the first night. I want to wake up with her. Grant me this one wish. Please let me do that. And I swear I'll live a good life. I swear, I swear to you. He imagines planting his seed inside Electra with the intent to impregnate her. Did you come inside me? His ultimate dream and definition of living a good life is to raise a child with the woman he loves. So it is fitting that he fantasizes about Electra getting pregnant. He could have easily lived this life and build a family with Electra, starting with his child. However, this is just a fantasy, and his life choices led him astray. Gaspar finds his father crying in the bath. Come here. Come to daddy. Murphy may have brought his own suffering onto himself, but Gaspar is innocent. He is forced to grow up with the harsh reality that his parents do not even love each other, that his life is a mistake, and that he is, in some ways at least, unwanted. Gaspar's very existence may bring pain to others, but he didn't do anything wrong, yet he must suffer anyway. Life is a source of happiness, but also hardship. 
Murphy may have brought this on Gaspar by impregnating Omi, but Omi also brought this on Gaspar by choosing to not abort. Murphy now faces the guilt that comes with his actions and states that life is not easy. Holding Gaspar in his arms, he asks for forgiveness, for he is lost. Please forgive me. <laughs> I am lost. However, in Murphy's past, as an aspiring filmmaker, life seemed much brighter. At one point, while on drugs at a party, Murphy opens up about his deep passion for life itself and how he wants to depict life in film. He believes that cinema has not been honest enough when it comes to sex and the sentimentality of it. It is his dream to bring this to the screen. Do you know what my biggest dream in life is? No. My biggest dream is to make a movie that truly depicts sentimental sexuality. Directly after this, Murphy rambles on about how we should birth babies. Why haven't we seen this in cinema? Yeah, why? I, I agree. I'm yeah. sentimental. I we should be like babies. Yeah. yeah. The fact that he mentions this directly after revealing his dreams suggests that his greatest desires in life are the acts of creating both film and life. Murphy states that the best things in the world is love followed by sex and it is his dream to merge the two on screen. What's the best thing in life? Love. Love. And then after that. Sex. <laughs> yes, and then you combine the two and sex while you're in love. That's the best oh, thing. Sorry, I want to see that. I, yeah. I want to see Murphy is consistent with this dream too. This is what he wants. This is his artistic ambition. I want to make movies out of blood, sperm, and tears. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like the essence of life. I think I think movies should contain that, or should be made of that. Blood, sperm, and tears, the liquid we produce as we reach levels of emotional and physical intensity. This is the essence of life. It is safe to speculate that this too is the philosophy Gaspar Noé lives by. Hi. Hey. You having a good time? Yeah, this is my favorite talk. Cool. Murphy recalls meeting Electra for the first time and walking together through the park as they find intimacy in a quiet and public setting. They talk about life and the essence of it. Electra states that to her, life itself is love. Okay, so you've been in love, you know what it feels like, but you're no longer there, you left. No, I mean, you, it happened that you end up in a situation where you feel a lot of love around you. Not only like in a relationship. I mean, love is love. Love is life. Love is light. Murphy speaks about birth and death focusing in on the fact that from birth, we know we will eventually die. Look, we live one life. When we're born, we know we're gonna die. While there are a few hints throughout that Murphy may have some level of faith in a higher power, he believes there is no life after death. There's nothing after death. Nothing. Nothing at all. He believes there is only one life to live, so we ought to live it right. We may not have control of what has happened, but we have some level of control of what will happen in our lives. But what is the meaning of life? This is what Murphy asked Electra. Hey, what's the meaning of life? Love. 